Hey guys, Mike here, and welcome to another Kingdom Death painting guide. This time I'm going to be tackling the Watcher. The first thing to do is assemble the Mini in about 25 not so simple steps. At this point you can glue the Watcher directly to the base, unless you want to do a custom base. If that's the case, then you'll want to pin the Watcher just to be safe, and also attach it to whatever you're using to hold it. I'm using a cork, and I'm going to stick a heavy washer on the bottom so it doesn't tip over. If you look in the description, I've put a timestamp for the base in case you want to skip right to that part. Just a heads up, I will be using the wet palette for blending colors in this video. If you don't have one, you can easily make one for around 5 bucks, and I'll post a link in the description for a video on how to do that in case you're interested. After priming the Watcher entirely in grey, I'm going to start off with a roughly equal mix of Kalidor Sky and Steel Legion Drab. I'm going to mix these colors until I get a murky looking green similar to Death World Forest. I'm applying this color to the entirety of the robes. Now I'm going to mix up the rest of the robe colors using these paints. Here I'm mixing about equal parts Kalidor Sky and Rhinox Hide, though I did keep adding blue until I get a very dark blue color. Next I'm taking equal amounts of each and mixing them in a pool in between, and then I'm going to blend all these colors together in a long line from dark to bright, just like you see here. I'm then adding a bit of Screaming Skull to the bright end, and I'm going to extend that out further until it's nearly pure Screaming Skull. Now it was at this point that I realized one of my lanterns was missing, but luckily there are plenty of extra lanterns in Kingdom Death, so I jury rigged one on as you can see here. So starting off with the brightest color, I'm going to map out where the lanterns would be hitting. I'm doing this very roughly, and I'm making them bigger than they would be in the end. You want to make them a bit bigger so that you can blend the brightest color to the darkest the further you get away from the lamp. I should mention that my paint is pretty thin right now, probably half water or even more, so that I can build up my layers of bright and dark more easily. The most obvious place to start with the highlights is directly under the lamps and any fabric that's folded next to them. Again, I'm making these very rough and somewhat bigger than they'll be in the end. I'm currently switching between the bone color and the slightly greenish color right next to it. The pure bone is going directly under the lamps and the fabric that's really close and the slightly darker color is going all around that. I'm also taking a bit of artistic liberty with the highlighting. I'm painting slightly over the lip of the fabric that is directly above a lamp so that people can see the highlight more easily. Next I want to brighten up directly under the lamps, so I'm going to mix in a small amount of white with my bone color. I'm also getting a tiny amount of my brush and swiping it very lightly over areas that will get the brightest highlights. So the highlight areas are mapped out, and as you can see, it looks pretty terrible right now, but that is okay. Next I'm going to tint all these highlighted areas using a 1 to 1 mix of Cassandora Yellow and Lamian Medium. You can also use Lamenter's Yellow Glaze. Both colors are similar, though Cassandora Yellow can be darkened more easily just by adding more layers of it. I'm first putting down one layer of this thin down wash over all of the OSL areas, and I'm also going to put a bit past that to give a yellowish hue to the surrounding area.
After that, I'll do a second layer to areas that are not directly under the light to give them a darker and more yellow color. So here's how the watcher looks now, and as you can see, the OSL is still quite a bit bigger than it should be. So the next step is to start scaling that back with the darker robe colors. Right now I'm using a color that is about 25% of the way up my color streak on the wet palette, which is the color that's slightly darker than the original robe color. I'm going to start off by using this to glaze over all of the areas not touched by the OSL, and then I'll start using it to blend the OSL areas into the rest of the robe. As I get further and further from the light sources, I'm going to start moving up my color streak, but I am not going to use the darkest color. That color is going to be reserved for the deepest shadows that are directly on the other side of a light source. The shoulders and the back of the head are quite far from the light, so these areas are going to get almost the darkest color. The inside of the hood, where a face would be, is getting the darkest color. Now I'm going to start sketching in some of the shadows with the darkest color. The best place for these is directly opposite of a light source. The contrast is going to make it look like the OSL is even brighter. I'm also going to use this on the insides of the folds of the cloak, no matter where those are, to give more definition to the cloak. I'm also using this color on all the holes and scratches in the cloak as well. Every once in a while I'll go back to places where the paint is dried and just smooth out anywhere that needs better blending. These colors are very thin so it's going to take multiple layers to get deep shadows and bright highlights. I'm painting the majority of the underside of the robes with the darkest color as well. So here I've switched to a thin brush and I'm using the dark color once again to reinforce the shadows in all the creases and the lines. I'm going to leave the OSL for a while and work on putting the rest of the base colors on. I'm going to start off by painting the inside of the lamps with a pure white. This one is ceramide white. Once the lamps are painted, I'm going back to the darkest color on my wet palette, and I'm going to use this to paint all the ropes and the rings that are attached to the lanterns. All of these tendrils that are coming out of the robes are getting painted with a pure black, and this one is just a bad and black from Games Workshop. Next I'm painting the scarf of faces that's around the watcher's neck. 
For this I'm using two parts German Grey and one part each of Kalidor Sky and Xurius Purple, just to keep the blue and purple color theme consistent. Now I'm going back to the lanterns and I'm using the exact same mix of 1 to 1 Cassandora yellow and medium to tint all of the lanterns yellow. Once that dries I'm going to add a second layer close to the bottom and to the top of each lamp to make it look like the center is a little bit brighter. These are some other colors you can use on top of the Cassandora yellow, but I would say this part is optional. By making a spectrum from light orange to a faded yellow, you can be more specific with where each color goes, and these colors will come in handy later for doing touch-ups. So there were a few places where the wash pooled too much, or there were some tide marks I didn't like, and I touched those up with these colors. I also added some of the faded yellow behind the lanterns to try to make that a bit brighter as well. Now you may have gone overboard a bit with your OSL like I did in this one spot. My buddy Randy pointed this out to me and I'm glad he did. The lanterns producing this light are too far away to make the OSL this bright. One of the great things about this miniature though is all the folds in the cloak. They break the cloak up into easier to paint segments. So I'm just going to paint this entire section with the middle color from my cloak colors. Then using the brighter colors I'll just highlight up the most raised areas and do a more subtle light effect. Next I'm painting all the casings for the lanterns using equal parts Warplock Bronze and Rhinox Hide. The one part of each lantern that I'm not painting is the inner rim that's closest to the light source on the top and the bottom. This part is a matter of preference and definitely optional, but I'm going to be painting the filigree with the same bronze color. Next I'll be using these colors again along with Nuln Oil Gloss, though regular Nuln Oil will work just fine. I'm using this all over the scarf to outline the faces and to darken their features. Once that's dry I'm mixing up some more of the two parts grey and one part blue and purple. I'm going to be adding white to this until it is noticeably lighter. Then using a small dry brush I'm going to go over the entire scarf to make the faces and the raised edges of the scarf stand out. Next I'm going to do the OSL on the scarf using these two grey colors. I'm first going to map out where I want the OSL with Mechanica Standard Grey. After that I'm switching to Althuan Grey and I'm really going to be brightening up the parts of the scarf that look like they'd be getting lamplight. Then once again I'm coming in with a Cassandora Yellow mixed with Medium and I'm washing this all over the lit up areas. The part of the scarf encircling the neck can be done with dry brushing, but I'm going to be painting these colors on. First Mechanicus, and then Althuan Grey, and then once again with the yellow. The tendrils are simply getting a dry brush with Xurius Purple, or whichever color you chose to mix into your scarf.
Any part of a lantern that's facing incoming light is getting a dry brush with bright bronze from Vallejo. If you don't have this, I'd go with a light gold, or you could even use silver and then give it a wash with your Cassandora yellow. The last thing to paint are the ribbons attached to the lantern rings. I'm using 1 to 1 Rhinox Hide and Steel Legion Drab to paint these, the same two colors that were used on the robe. I'm also using this color to mark out where the OSL will go on the ropes, which isn't a lot, just a few spots here and there. After that's dry, I'm then using Screaming Skull to brighten up the edges of the rope and the tips of the ribbons. And when that dries, I'm coming in to finish it off with a Cassandora Yellow. So that concludes the painting of the Watcher, and now it's time for the base. I'm going to be building the base using pieces of bark. This is pine bark, but cedar or any other thick, lumpy bark is great for this. And you can get this at most garden centers as a type of mulch. I'm also going to be using a resin face from this base. These were a gift from Todd at Rain City Hobbies. Todd's a painter who goes by Toad Paints, and he does some pretty amazing stuff. I'll link his YouTube channel, store, and his Instagram in the description in case you want to see more of his work. I want the watcher to be standing on top of a big rock, so I'm going to be using green stuff to stick two pieces of bark together. I'm then using a sculpting tool dipped in water to flatten it out. Just to try to get the green stuff texture to match the rock, I'm using another piece of bark and pressing it into the green stuff. Before I glue my bark down, I want to mark out where it's going to be going so I can add surface features. You may want to do this as well if you plan on adding rocks, skulls, or sticks, etc. Right now I'm just gluing down this one face. Next I'm laying down some earth texture, and this is also going to act as the glue for the big rock that the watcher is standing on. If you don't like the look of the green stuff, you can also cover it with the same earth texture. I'm giving that time to dry, and then I'm going to use some extra earth texture to cover up any areas that shrank too much or places where I see holes. I'm also going to be sticking a skull into the mud. I'm letting that dry again before priming the whole thing in black. These are the colors that I'll be using to paint the rocks. I'm starting off with a heavy dry brush of dryad bark all over the base, including the earth texture, the skull, and the face. I'm then following that up with a lighter dry brush of Vallejo's earth color, once again all over the entire base. Now before I go any further with the base, I need to attach the watcher to see where my highlights are going to need to go. If your watcher doesn't attach properly, don't be afraid to cut away some of the bark to make it sit properly. I dry fit mine before I pinned it just to make sure it would sit right, and now I just need to drill the hole and glue it down. Also, don't worry about having to drill multiple holes if you have to. You can always cover those up with some earth texture later on. Once the watcher is in place, I'm doing a heavy dry brush, first with earth from Vallejo and then Carrick Stone from GW. I'm covering all the area of rock under the lamps. I'll let you know now that I went back later with some thinned down earth color and almost completely covered the top surface of the rock a second time to brighten it up. A couple layers of dry brushing just didn't make it quite as bright as I'd wanted it. There's also a few key areas that I want to brighten up, since some of the lanterns are swinging out wide. These are the skull and the face on the ground, as well as any ledges of rock that are along the way. 
The final step is to tint the OSL in the same way as I did on the cloak and the lanterns. I'm applying a thin layer of the yellow all over the top surface of the rock, and a second layer if it doesn't look quite yellow enough. Once that's done, I'm using the Drukei Violet Purple Wash on all the undersides of the rocks, especially those that are directly under areas that are receiving OSL. And this is going to help deepen the shadows. And there you have it, the Watcher from Kingdom Death Monster. Thank you to all my patrons for sponsoring these videos, and a special thanks to Brian Jones for sponsoring the channel. I'm really glad you guys voted for the Watcher. I've been looking forward to painting this for a long time now. If you want to see more from my Kingdom Death series, please subscribe. Don't forget to check out the links in the description, and thank you for watching.